Stereotypes are one way that people make sense of each other, according to social cognition research. Stereotypes are the cognitive or belief component of intergroup bias. For example, if people believe immigrants to be untrustworthy, that is a stereotype. Stereotypes tend to correlate with emotional prejudices such as resentment and behavioral discrimination such as exclusion. Social psychologists have studied stereotypes since the upsurge of European immigration to the US in the early 1900s. In the 1930s, journalist Walter Lippmann coined the term stereotype from the lead type pieces then used in printing. Each piece of type for a single letter made the same impression every time, an unvarying stereotype. Psychological scientists such as Daniel Katz and Emery Bogardus jumped onto the topic, focusing on biases against immigrants, especially Jewish, Irish and Italian people, and biases against black Americans. By the 1950s and afterwards, Gordon Allport and most stereotyping researchers focused on anti-black biases, which seemed more intractable than the others. Allport generated some of the most lasting insights, talking about, as he put it, nouns that cut slices. People rapidly categorize each other by social groups such as ethnicity, gender, age, class, disability, religion and more. He described how all blacks were stereotyped as lazy and all Jews as untrustworthy. As we now know, these instant categories come from the culture, such as media images. Categories are relatively automatic, so people mostly can't help sorting each other in these ways. These categories have automatic associations to stereotypes, prejudice and discrimination, so that is a problem for society. Some of the most disturbing research shows just how automatic stereotypes are. For example, in the 1980s, Patricia Devine was the first to show that even well-intentioned white people have automatic associations from racial labels to racial stereotypes. Likewise, Mazarin Bonaggi and Anthony Greenwald developed the implicit association test, which millions of people have taken online to understand their own rapid associations between societal groups and certain stereotypes and negative evaluations, for example, between men and science and women and humanities. People do have some control over these responses, a point we will discuss at the end. In her lab, Susan Fisk and her colleagues have built on this research to discover What's most commonly in a stereotype? When people are making sense of other people, they first ask, like the sentry on guard duty, friend or foe? Are you on my side or not? If you are a friend, then you are warm and trustworthy. Second, people ask, in effect, can you act on your intentions? Are you competent or not? These two simple questions provide a map of cultural stereotypes around the world. Stereotypes have two basic dimensions, apparent warmth, and competence. Combinations of these two result in four basic clusters of group stereotypes. They cluster high or low on each dimension. For example, some groups seem low on both worm and competence. People believe these groups are disgusting, of no redeeming value, neither competent nor trustworthy. This stereotype hits homeless people, undocumented immigrants and drug addicts all over the world. In the US, poor black people are stereotyped this way. At the opposite extreme, our group stereotyped as high on both dimensions. People believe these groups are totally wonderful, both warm and competent. These stereotypes benefit citizens, the middle class, and often the country's dominant ethnic and religious groups. In the US, that would be whites and Christians. Between these two extremes are mixed out group stereotypes, high on one dimension but low on the other. For example, enviable groups such as rich people and business people seem competent but cold. In the US, Asians and Jews are stereotyped this way as are career women. The opposite stereotype zeroes in on groups seen as incompetent but well-intentioned, such as older people or people with disabilities. Women in traditional roles are often seen this way. Stereotypes such as these appear in dozens of countries around the world. Of course, each place has its own ethnic or other intergroup tensions. Whatever the stereotypes, they matter to people's lives because they bias other people's reactions. So is there any good news? Research on stereotypes is still a hot top, with new insights all the time. Current work includes brain imaging data, stress hormones and media studies. But we have much to learn. We still need to understand how people categorize ambiguous, for example multiracial people, and how stereotypes are unlearned. As an everyday person, studying stereotypes, increasing contact with a diverse array of people and being motivated to go beyond automatic first impressions can make us treat each other as the individuals we are.